Center Operations Capacity Planning and Management video series. My name is Ben Shear and I'm a member of the product team for vCenter Operations here at VMware. Also note our new Twitter handle at vCenter Ops. This is the third of four videos that dive deeper into the capacity and planning and optimization capabilities from vCenter Operations version 5. Please use the following URLs or access the YouTube channel directly. For more information on vCenter Operations Management Suite, please consider the following two videos, vCenter Operations version 5 Introduction with Kit Culper and vCenter Infrastructure Navigator Overview with myself. Also, access the homepage directly on vmware.com slash go slash vcops. So without further ado, let's begin. So let's jump back to the dashboard. So next, we will look at the an analysis tab, and you can see that uh, this pulls up our heat map analysis. And you notice the different views that we've included for capacity management. So cluster capacity, remaining size by workload, group by data center. And this gives you an indication, again, to zero in on the unhealthy uh, objects within your environment. And in this case, of course, it's cluster capacities, this particular cluster we can drill into. Uh, and red to green, obviously, indicating the uh, level of health. And then the size of the box indicates the amount of workload actually working on this particular cluster. And we have many views uh, available, uh, health, size by workload, group by data center. And you can obviously build views as well or customize views to satisfy what your individual requirements are. So let's go ahead and uh, customize a view. Count remaining by host, do this by host, group by data center, then by cluster. We're going to color by capacity remaining. We're going to color focus on capacity. Capacity remaining, cut VM. What I need to do is reverse the colors. Because if you didn't, you'd notice that they would not look correct. So green needs to be on this side of the spectrum, red on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now we'll scroll down to where we created that custom heat map view. VM count remaining by host. Go ahead and click on this object, which obviously is red. It actually pulls up a planning view by virtual machine ca capacity. It gives you a summary. So it shows you capacity left. And it will also show you which resource is uh, restricting it, in this case, uh, disk space. So another thing that's new is uh, as we drill over to events, and now that we have the badges, we can actually uh, indicate which events we want to see. So I want to look at total events. Let's look at this cluster right here. And we'll look at all the time series risk events. And as you can see, if I click on related events here, then it'll actually overlay the events which may have forced the change. So, so we see dips in performance, and this could be, um, a, for example, in this particular instance, uh, it could be a change in effective memory. Now, this also uh, would apply to anything to do with capacity, stress, efficiency, waste, and density. So if any events are correlated with that, we can show uh, those overlaid by performance within this particular capacity. So I want to go back into planning and drill into more of the data store capacity analytics. As I mentioned earlier, storage is now a first class citizen, adding that extra dimension in storage capacity. So we've actually added 
four new views to the dashboard. We can look at idle virtual machines. This allows you, obviously, to help clean up any waste. Same with powered off virtual machines. Data store capacity usage, so we can look at a trending graph, and as well as your virtual machine library, which resides under this particular data store. So really helpful information for you to plan and manage capacity within your data stores. A few new things that we've added in the current release that we had not had before. It's really important to note that we now estimate the capacity for disk I.O. and disk space. So the what if analysis, the modeling, uh, hasn't changed. So how we now calculate capacity and time remaining now includes additional dimensions like disk I.O., uh, disk space, latency, so things that uh, we hadn't had uh, in prior versions. So actually let's take a look at that. So for capacity and time remaining, we actually now include buffers for disk I.O. capacity usage, disk space capacity usage. Uh, we didn't have that before, so it includes additional resources basically to analyze capacity. So we have, we've added a few things to the capacity and time remaining as well. You can now select physical and usable as well as this time determination. So this is a really great feature because based on the badge score, we can actually buffer this to a 30 days provisioning. So we can plan the number may be critical at the risk stage on the risk badge, but this will include a 30 day buffer to provision new capacity to bring that number back up. Also by giving you the choices of what compute resources to analyze, choices like consider disk space capacity and usage. Some customers did not want to include that simply because disk is managed maybe by a different department, so they weren't concerned about overall capacity. We also give you consider reservations for CPU and memory. So in our modeling, let's look at capacity remaining for a host. So if you look at demand straight, you would possibly have a lot of VMs with limits and the demand could go really high, but the host is not suffering because that is a limit the user chose to use. So you do not want to count demand that is over the limit. So what we have is essentially effective demand or demand that impacts the host. The name is limited demand, but it is demand from the VMs that is not limited. Conversely, reservations cannot be overcommitted. So the demand created by reservations is going to be used straight. So since it cannot be overcommitted when you aggregate all your reservations, you'll be out of capacity if the sum of reservations equal the capacity. Thank you for viewing part three of this four part video series. Remember to view the rest of the videos by accessing the following URLs or through the VMware YouTube channel. Thank you again, and this is Ben Shear. Signing off.